Hello friends, here we are going to study the syllabus of physics, chapter of wave optics. Let us define the wave optics. So light consider as wave and we study the phenomena or the phenomena of light by considering the wave nature of light that is called the wave optics. And in that wave optics we have the basic theories in the nature of light as the first one is a corpuscular nature that is given by Newton. Then second one is the wave nature that is given first by hygiene. Then third one is a dual nature of light, very small topic. And then we have the fourth one, light as electromagnetic waves. So let us begin with the first one that is the corpuscular nature. So in corpuscular uh, nature, the Newton given or the Newton proposed first time the Newton's corpuscular theory of light. And in that theory we have uh, following points. So one by one we see what points are, what are the predictions given by the Newton in his theory. So the very first point, Newton say that the light source emit the light in a form of particles. So particles are coming out from any type of light source and that particles are called corpuscles. So if we consider any light source like this, so these light source emit the particles. So light source will be emit the light in a form of particles and that particles will be called the corpuscles. which are having certain properties. That properties will be, the first one is, these are massless. So no gravitational force will be acting on that particles. Then these are hard or rigid. And these are very light in weight and travel with very high speed. So the corpuscles are hard or rigid, massless and elastic in nature. Now second point, the corpuscles travel in straight line with very high speed which gives the rectilinear propagation of light. Rectilinear means light travel in straight line that is given by the Newton according to the corpuscles travel with a very high speed in a homogeneous medium and that gives a rectilinear propagation. Number third point that corpuscles emitted by any light source has a different speed in different medium. So when corpuscle travel in air medium, it has certain speed. When that corpuscle enter into the water medium or any other uh, medium, transparent medium, then the speed will be goes on changing. And again, there is a more detailed prediction of the speed The Newton gives that the speed of corpuscle is greater in denser medium compared to the rarer medium. For example, the speed of corpuscles is greater in water medium compared to the air medium. So which is not correct in this particular observation or in real experimental result, this statement is wrong here. So speed will be greater in rarer compared to denser. So these are the points given by Newton's corpuscular theory. Now, which phenomena are explained by Newton's corpuscular theory and which cannot be explained, that will be discussed here. So phenomena of reflection, phenomena of refraction and corresponding laws can be satisfactorily explained by Newton here in his theory. 
again newton is able to explain the phenomena of rectilinear propagation means light travel in straight line that also explained by the newton here but some phenomena for example interference or interference of light and second one diffraction of light third one polarization of light these three phenomena for example interference diffraction and polarization cannot be explained by the newton's corpuscular theory that phenomena we are going to learn later on in this same chapter here so some points of this theory will will be correct and some will be uh, wrong or has certain drawbacks so this theory will be accepted several years but in same era in same time duration there was another scientist that will give the second theory called the wave nature or wave theory of light so let us see the second part of the nature of light as the wave nature so in same era there was another scientist name hygin he has given some assumption about the light in same era and in that assumption we have certain points so very first point in hygin's theory or hygin's wave theory is light propagate in a form of waves or light propagate in a form of mechanical waves which always require a material medium for the propagation so initially hygin suggests that or assume that the light propagate in a form of longitudinal wave and we know that the longitudinal wave always require a material medium for propagation for example sound waves so sound waves require always a material medium so same hygin suggests that or assume that the light travel in a form of longitudinal wave which require material medium for propagation now light could travel through vacuum also so in vacuum there is no presence of medium vacuum is a region of region where there is no medium but light can travel through medium uh, that vacuum also where there is no medium so he suggested in second point that light travel through one homogeneous medium and that medium is called the ether which is not similar to the, the chemistry ether which is a different ether so that ether medium is present everywhere in vacuum also in any transparent medium so that medium is present everywhere which is imaginary medium that is always present everywhere and with the help of that medium light propagate through that particular medium or either in that uh, vacuum region also so scientist try to find out that medium nowadays or in the 20th cent century no presence of ether medium was proved that ether is not present here so that point is one of the drawback of the hygin's theory or wave nature now third point next point hygin explain the number of phenomena for example reflection refraction according to his own concept or according to his hygin's wave theory concept so that we are going to later on study separately that is hygin's wave theory so we have certain phenomena that satisfactorily explained by hygin and there are certain phenomena which cannot be explained by the hygin for example the phenomena of reflection the phenomena of refraction then phenomena of interference diffraction are satisfactorily explained by the hygin's wave theory then certain phenomena for example the polarization of light then photoelectric effect which cannot be explained by the hygin's wave theory of light which later on explained by other scientists or other theories like this so there are certain uh, points which are correct and some are not correct or incorrect by given by the hygin's wave theory of light now we have the third part that third part gives us the dual nature of light so let us discuss the dual nature in short
Now we have certain phenomena, for example, interference, diffraction, which will give the wave nature of light. So let us explain in detail. Suppose we have wave nature and corresponding phenomena, for example, interference, diffraction, etc. And we have second particle nature. That particle is different than the Newton's particle. So that phenomena are photoelectric effect. Then Compton effect. So we have dual nature. Light has two natures. One is wave nature, can be proved by interference and diffraction, and another nature that is the particle nature, which is not same as the corpuscular nature or particle given by the Newton. That particle is other than the corpuscular particle. So that particle will be given by Einstein's photoelectric effect. So in that effect, we consider light as a particle and that particle is called photon. Light has a particle nature according to Einstein and using this particular phenomena we explain, using this, that nature we explain the phenomena of photoelectric effect as well as the Compton effect and many more other effect in which we consider light as particle. So we have both the natures, dual nature, wave as well as particle possessed by the light here. So this is a very so small topic given in the textbook. Now we have the fourth part in which light act as electromagnetic waves. So in fourth part, we have few points. So in chapter standard 11th, we have already studied light we have as the electromagnetic waves or we have separate chapter of electromagnetic waves and communication. So shortly we discuss about that. So electromagnetic waves consist of the electric vectors or electric field vectors and magnetic field vectors which are vibrate perpendicular to each other and also vibrate uh, per perpendicular direction of propagation. So these will be already we have studied in standard 11th. So this already you know, we have properties of electromagnetic waves, refractive index, depend upon the permittivity, permeability, and the per small portion of electromagnetic wave is visible light. So already we know that visible light and its properties. So that will be discussed in this particular topic, very small topic in which already we have learned in 11th standard. So in next lecture, we begin with the actual wave theory that is given by Huygens wave theory and corresponding points. Thank you.